This is the second from home, the penultimate fence. The Dickler takes it first, and he's going well, and the Dickler is holding Bueller at the moment. This could be an upset. The Dickler, if he can win this, he'll really advertise his grand national prospects. Bueller coming at him, though, on the right, but it's still the Dickler. Racing to this 22nd and final fence, and the Dickler, a good one over in the lead. Bueller still second, and on the run for home now. It's the Dickler, but now Bueller sprinting, and Bueller's going to win it. Oh, yes, Bueller wins it all right. Bueller finds a tremendous turn of speed. Bueller and John Frank, and so at the line, it's Bueller. Don't touch. Rises a length, two lengths clear from Netherbridge in second. In third is Famous Footsteps. Behind that is Bam Savarden as they come towards the second last. And it's Don't Touch and Johnny Frankham clear by two lengths from Netherbridge. Then Famous Footsteps and Bam Savarden. And coming to the last is John Frankham and Don't Touch. Don't Touch and John Frankham at the last fence. And he's over it clear. Johnny Frankham over clear as the crowd rise to him. Don't touch it, sprinting away now for John Frankham, going three, four lengths clear, and this is it, this is the record, number 1,036 winners for John Frankham, as the crowd rise to him, don't touch the sixth length winner, and this is the record that has stood for 12 years, surpassed by John Frankham, on the winner number four. So, uh, I was delighted to win it today, get it over and done with. How important is this record to you? Well... Um, I never ever set out to try and break Stan's record, it's just sort of happened over the years, but obviously I'm pleased to have done it. And when I rode my thousandth winner, Stan was the first person to send me a telegram and say well done. And I know that he won't mind me, well at least I hope he won't mind me, I haven't beaten him. I dare say a few years time, Pete Skewdham or somebody will come along and do me. But uh, it would, it's nice to have held the record, even if it's only just for a couple of years. How much of a problem has uh, your injury been in the last month or so? Well, it's funny enough, it's still quite sore, and uh, regardless of whether I rode a winner today, I was going to have tomorrow and Wednesday off, just to try and give it a little bit of chance to heal that. I went to Ireland to ride the weekend, and uh, a horse fell alongside of me and went right the way down and opened the cut up again, but uh, not feeling it at the moment. Well, you've broken this record, you've broken others as well. Where do you go from here? Um, two mile oil race in a minute just outside here and that'll be it <laughs> so now as long as I keep on enjoying my riding and keep free of injury that's the main thing so how many seasons do you see left probably another one I should think well well done and here's to the next hundred thank you very much well done, well done, well done, 1036 winners over not so very many years added to uh, those that didn't win that's an awful lot of rides since 1969 Johnny Frankham congratulations to him this afternoon they've seen a stride and they get a horse they give it a kick and get it really running and it gets to the fence and it's wrong and it finds it's awkward and sort of pulls its back and gets a pull in the mouth and one thing or another it's not going to enjoy the jumping it'll worry about it it's a combination of everything it's a combination of you getting a feel from a horse um, you get a feeling, when a horse sees a fence, I don't know what it is, something happens and you get a feeling come up through its body, through your legs, which goes, but it comes through the rain, ends up in your brain to tell you that that horse has actually seen the fence and it's anticipating jumping. And when you don't get that feeling, I'd say it's not very nice, <laughs> because the only one thing that happens is that you end up on the floor. Um, so it's a combination of that feeling, and then you have to judge the speed with which you're travelling at, um, and try and get the horse to, ideally it wants to be taken off about three feet in front of the fence or hurdle. The pulling part was the only part of the job that I never ever got fed up with. Um, to get on a young horse that's never jumped anything in its life and pop it over some hurdles for the first time was a great thrill. The reason I found it fascinating was because each horse was different. I mean, say you're on a horse that um, jumps the first hurdle and it doesn't jump it very well. You've got to know straight away why it hasn't jumped it very well. Either it, perhaps it lacks a little bit of confidence and it just wants to go up and down a few more times and pat on the neck or sometimes it might be leery and wants a good crack round the backside, in which case you do it there and then. And it's important that you know your job. Um.
and Royal Frolic right up there now at this penultimate ditch with Fort Devon. Royal Frolic from Fort Devon there. Midnight Court on the inside and Fort Foxafola there. Running downhill now towards the fourth from home in the Piper Champagne Gold Cup and it's Fort Devon from Royal Frolic, Midnight Court, Cancello and Master H, these five. Little between the leading duo there, Fort Devon and Royal Frolic with Midnight Court and John Frankham just in behind them. They're coming to the home turn with two fences left to jump and Midnight Court coming there strongly on the inside of Fort Devon and Royal Frolic to take it up now. And it's John Frankham bidding for compensation for that defeat in the Daily Express Triumph Hurdle as he comes to the second last to try and win Fred Winter his first Gold Cup. He comes to the second last well clear, jumps it well. It's Midnight Court going away now from Royal Frolic and Fort Devon then comes Master H and Bachelors Hall coming to the last fence now and Midnight Court has only got to jump it. He jumps it well and strides away from it to a great roar. Royal Frolic has fallen at the last. And as they race up towards the line, Midnight Court going away from the remainder. Brown Lads putting in a tremendous run. So is Bachelors Hall and Master H. But as they come up towards the line, it's Midnight Court. Well, clearly wins the Piper Champagne Gold Cup. Midnight Court wins it. Your Snowtown boy coming down now to the second last fence in the hopeful chase. Pillager under pressure from Excelsior, Snowtown Boy coming there very easily indeed. Pillager there from Snowtown Boy in second and a bad mistake there by Excelsior, rather did well to recover, Atlantic Bridge disputing third and here comes Snowtown Boy who's cruised into the lead, very effortlessly indeed, John Frankham still with a tight hold of him. Snowtown Boy just has to jump, it does it well. Pillager on the near side and John Frankham cheekily looking across to Pillager's rider, uh, Bob Champion, and is making no effort at all, John, just holding this horse neatly together, letting him stride up towards the line to win this hopeful chase in very impressive style indeed. A real morale booster for a horse, this. Snowtown Boy the winner from Pillager in second and third Atlantic Bridge. Now, and it's Uncle Bing being pressed by Doubly Royal. Then comes Ballycross, Gilladacker, and Sweet September. A furlong to run now, and it's still Uncle Bing being pressed by Doubly Royal. Doubly Royal coming there very strongly on the stand side now. 200 yards to run. Uncle Bing from Doubly Royal. Uncle Bing is holding Doubly Royal. The top weight is going to win it at the line. Uncle Bing and John Frankham with the top and trophy. Doubly Royal is second, and Ballycross is third. There's an Anaglog's daughter together now with News King. Coming towards the stands rail, the challenger on the near side. Not much between the three of them. Western Rose was just the leader. News King jumped into second place. Anik Log's daughter running on strongly, remains in third. And close up, but there's a big, big gap after these. Uh, back to the remainder, Western Rose. News King on the near side, who's just the leader. Fractional at present, but is improving coming down to the final fence. News King going to jump the last, a clear leader. Just a furlong to go now. News King over it safely. Western Rose in second. Anaglog's daughter in third. And we wait now for Rich Mead to take it in fourth. And Rich Mead safely over it. So there we have News King from Western Rose. Anaglog's daughter. This is very, very exciting to ride, you know. When you really press the button, you know, and he, he answers to you. It's just a bit special. It's hard to explain the feeling, really. Uh, must be marvellous. I doubt if I've ever felt it. <laughs> <laughs> John Joe, uh, what, what about his jumping? He has just occasionally uh, made he a has. nonsense. Yes, he's really, I suppose you would call him a brilliant holder, really, but uh, he just stands up bit too far off when he has fallen once or twice. You know, he, he's, a, he's a dare horse, you know, he's, he dare anything. You know, he'll uh, really go in and he'll just come up, you know, anywhere near the holder at all, he'll just come up, you know. And of course, for some extraordinary reason, he slipped up twice on the flat, including the other day. That's right, yeah. The other day looked very nasty, actually. I don't know what happened to him, quite, uh, just quite what happened, but uh, he got a very nasty fall when he got up. It looked as I thought he had broken his leg for a second, you know, the way he dangled, but uh, he went home the next morning, he was okay, and never, never any problems at all, you know, so he's 100%, thank God, you know. Great. He's just beginning to go in his coat, but we wouldn't worry about that, would we? I hope not, no. Uh, he just doesn't look as bright as he has done, you know, but it's, uh, it's the time of year for him to be breaking and uh, 
I don't think it'll bother him. He seems to be walking well at home and everything. Lovely. Well, anyway, we both long to see him win. Let's see whether anybody tips anything to beat him. Well, one. Celtic ride. You've ridden that, John Joe, but uh, I wouldn't give it uh, too much chance today. Anyway, it hasn't, hasn't run since it split a Paston, but let's have a look at the betting. Sea Pigeon, the 7-4 on favourite. Celtic ride is 9-2 from 4-1. to one. Remezzo shows at 6-1. to one. Preacta at 10s. And Golden Vow at 16-1. to 33-1 to one bar those. Well, the other in the picture there was Tom's little owl, but there's Preacta, Ben de Haan, who rides uh, Preacta, and rode him when he was second, running a really fine race in the Royal Doulton Handicap Hurdle. Well, both John Joe and I believe that if there is a danger to Sea Pigeon, Preacta might be it. John Joe, you think quite a lot of him. Yes, I do. Trail, trained by David Ellsworth, but there they go with Sea Pigeon settling down last. Yes, Sea Pigeon, the favourite, being held up at the moment as Golden Bar makes it. Eight runners, eight flights of hurdles, and two miles is the trip. And they're now approaching flight number one. With uh, Golden Vow being sent about his business early on by Anthony Webber, coming to jump the first now. Golden Vow took it in the lead all over, and uh, Sea Pigeon still last of the eight runners at this stage. Racing now between flights one and two. This next one is going to be the final one after a complete circuit of the course. And it's Golden Vow in the lead at the moment from Romezzo bandaged in front in second. Million Dollar Man comes next in third under Roy Davis. Then four golden symbol, five on the rails, the spotted jacket of Prey Acta. In sixth place is uh, the check jacket of Celtic Ride. Seven towards the outside, the only blinkered runner in the field, Tom's Little Al. And still being held up, last of the eight, is the favorite Sea Pigeon. They're passing the post now with a complete circuit to go. And it's still the front running Golden Vow out in front, setting the pace to Remezzo now second in third place million dollar man four gold and civil five prey up to six the striped jacket of Tom's little owl and the last two seven and eight Celtic ride and finally sea pigeon at the top of the hill and turning right-handed to run downhill now and still golden vow the 25 to 1 shot he was 16 to 1 early on in the betting eased out to 25 to 1 but belying his odds at the boat going really well and fluently in the lead some uh, six to eight legs clear of Remezzo in second. Million Dollar Man is third. Golden Symbol is fourth. Preactor is fifth. Tom's Little Al is sixth. In seventh place, Celtic Ride. And still eighth and last, but going really well within himself is Sea Pigeon. So as they run towards flight number three, that's the order. And John, the favorite, a long way behind, but of course he does like to be held up. Well, John Joe, would John Frankham have anything to worry about uh, with Golden Bar getting in a long lead? Well, I wouldn't like to see him going too far away because I thought he, he was, I could have caught him before, but he keeps going on this track, you know. Depends on how fit he is, but um, I should think John will be weighing the race up himself and be quite happy where he is at the moment. Let's just, we'll, we'll, we'll see, him, see him in the moment. Oh, that, that, there he is. Him, yeah, he's quite handy enough. Uh, he looks happy to me, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks, he's canting away, he's jumping really ping well, that. you know. Yeah, <laughs> ping that beautifully, yeah. Um, he's well in contention, yeah, I'd be happy enough where he is now. Well, we're happy. Back to you, Rawlin. Yes, John and Sea Pigeon looking pretty happy as well. They're past halfway, though, now in the Holston Diet Pills. And this is the fourth last, in fact. And the field beginning to bunch up somewhat now. But first and last are still the same. Golden Vow and Sea Pigeon. And in between these two come Remezzo in second. Preactor now third. And closing up fast is uh, Celtic Ride. Million Dollar Man shows they're now in third. And now John Joe asks Sea Pigeon to go about his business. The champion hurdler, John uh, Franken, rather, not John Joe, he'd have a surprise. He's in the stands. But it's John Franken now asking for Sea Pigeon for the effort. And uh, the champion hurdler, as I say, quickening up really well now. He's coasting up on the outside of his field and is now within striking distance. Running now into the final straight with just over half a mile ago, just two to jump. And Golden Vow on the inside, spot that white star still in front. Remets so in second, golden symbol with the blaze on the outside. Right in behind him is Sea Pigeon, who is only about five lengths off the pace now, but they're well grouped as they come now to take the second last flight. Sea Pigeon being pulled to the outside, and here Celtic Ride going as well as anything. And Celtic Ride now just goes on from Golden Bar. Sea Pigeon now in close contention, right behind in third place. Remezzo hanging on well in fourth. This is the eighth and final flight, and here it's Celtic Ride over first. Sea Pigeon over second, but the favorite now full of running up on the near side. It's between the two market leaders, and Sea Pigeon now takes over the running. Racing now inside the final far on, and John Frankham has the favourite in front of the stands. The crowd here in the stands are cheering for him, coming up the line. The champion Hartley's going to win it, and up the line. Sea Pigeon is the winner. Celtic Ride is second. Remezzo third. These three clear of a remote fourth. Golden Bar who made the other running. Five golden symbols, six million dollar man, seven grey actor, and eight and last. Just passing the post now for the uh, blinker for the first time, Tom's little owl.
So, John Frankham has won on Sea Pigeon, who completes a double. He, of course, won this race last year when it was a match. There was no betting at all on the race. John Joe was in the saddle on that occasion, and, of course, he would have been up today but for that awful fall that he suffered, which is going to put him out for quite some time. And uh, John Franken, though, patently got on with the champion hurdler really well. He's now in his 11th year, shortly to become 12, as all horses, of course, do. They age on January the 1st. But uh, a great performer, a great character, a horse who on his latest appearance was on the ground. That was when he slipped up in a flat race, the Sam Hall Memorial Trophy, a race that uh, we televised to you from York on the 11th of October. Well, Sea Pigeon is the winner. He's now won 19 times over hurdles. Let's see how he brought his score to that total. And to take us through the replay, John Oti. Well, here he is, John Joe, pinging the second last. Were you happy at this stage? Yes, yeah. Um, he jumped beautifully all the way, you know, and John was always going nicely on him. Just brought him with a lovely run. Steve gave him a nice lead to the last, and he just pressed the button and it was all over. Celtic rides run very really well, hasn't he? He ran a cracking race, you know, after being out for uh, with, with uh, split past and, you know, just a super race to run, you know. He must improve on the run, so he, he'd be one to watch for this year, I would but think. But the old fella really jumped that quick, didn't he? He, he, he flew, he really hauled it, you know. Um, John just having to niggle him along there, you know, but he's always going to hold him. That's what all the old lad does, he just does enough to keep, to keep his head in front. <laughs> it's a lovely sight, isn't it? Yeah, smashing. Does he? With you sometimes, he's stopped a bit when he gets in front. Yeah, he stops, yeah. yeah. You look at his ears now, you know, he's just not doing a tap like, you know, he's pulling up all the time and it's just, you get desperate, you know, you, can just, you know, the force is never going to come. <laughs> but it did come for his 19th victory over hurdles and a victory which, to me at least, proves that age isn't slowing him down at all. So there he is, the great and much loved sea pigeon and John didn't ride him badly did he no he gave him brilliant ride <laughs> brilliant well back to you Rawley he was a six to four on favorite he was indeed John and he won white like one although the margins in fact were just three quarts of a length and two lengths and the result now confirmed this win in the race for the second year in succession the winner number one sea pigeon the champion hurdler owned by mr. Pat Muldoon trained at Malton in Yorkshire by Peter Easterby and ridden by John Frankham Second was number four, Celtic Ride, owned by Mr. R.F. Hayward, trained by Peter Cundle at Compton and ridden by Steve Smith Eccles. Third was number 11, Romezzo, owned by Mr. A.W.H. Sykes and Mr. D.R.C. Ellsworth, trained by David Ellsworth at Chippenham and ridden by Colin Brown. The margins, as I say, three quarts of a length and two lengths, and officially placed fourth, as you can see now, the confirmation number six, which was Golden Vow, owned by Mrs. R. Dowsett and C.L. Burgess, trained by Bob Hartop near Cheltenham and ridden by Tony Webber. And bookmaker reaction after that win by the champion, well, the Hill organization, they uh, uh, say no change for the odds about him and the champion. Corals have reduced him to seven to two of the same price that the tote are quoting. And uh, Ward Hills, in fact, give you the best price about the champion hurdler. They go four to one for him. Here he is. Listen to the reception he's getting. Sea Pigeon. Now in his 11th year, and partnered for the first time by John Franklin. Sea Pigeon, a marvellous horse, a winner almost as many times, in fact, on the flat as he is over hurdles. He, in fact, broke the record for prize money on the flat obtained by Gilding. That was Bold Boy. And, in fact, today he passes Monksfield's total. The only ones ahead of him now being Red Rum, Night Nurse, and Comedy of Errors. There he is. The SP is as follows. There is the favourite, Sea Pigeon, and he certainly knows his way around Cheltenham. The winner last year, he was second to Monksfield before that. Second to Monksfield previously again in 78. Well, I wonder, can he make it too? He's 9-4 to four now, hardening all the time. John Frankham getting the leg up there, but uh, John will certainly get the feel of this horse now. He's uh, opted for this one rather than Celtic Ride, and I think that is a tip in itself. But I think that, as John Joe says, this fellow wants to come even later than the last. I think that uh, John is certainly the man to deputise well for John Joe. What do you think, John? Yes. 
Well, I, I just wondering what you thought uh, about John. I think he's a cool customer and he'll really come late on this horse. Yeah, definitely, yes. Uh, le as late as possible, really, Richard. You know, he's, he looks grand and relaxed at the moment, which is the main thing. Um, he's... Monica's probably chatting away at him, keeping nice and calm. You know, he likes to be in that place. He, he sometimes gets very worked up, you know, with the loudspeakers and that and parading on the track, which today he's just lovely and settled like he was last year. Well, let's hope he's settled again going to the last because this is a horse that served racing well. Um, he, people really like to identify with a hero, and this fellow has been one of the heroes we've been lucky enough to see. And his last there, Monica, will be getting more excited than the old horse, I would imagine. But he's two runs only. He's not run since November, but Peter Easterby is certainly adept at producing them ready for the day. 24,000 to the winner this time. That's Sea Pigeon himself and John Frankham John trying to make this his 80th winner of the season a season in which he has such a narrow lead over Peter Skudamore he's on the 70, 77 mark riding Slaney Idol walk setting the pace as they come to the first of the eight flights and setting a good pace too Melodon in the lead from Pollardstown and going straight those three set up a little gap there, and Ivan King has gone to the first. Ivan King, a faller at the first, very well in touch with them too. Coming down now to the third last flight with Pollardstown, the clear leader. Pollardstown jumps it in the lead from Bearsworth Boy, who makes a mistake, going straight on the inside. Side, it's the old man, Sea Pigeon, coming to take it up, and he's going to win it as they come up towards the line. Sea Pigeon wins the champion hurdle. Sea Pigeon has just won it from Pollardstown. By Mr. Pat Muldoon, trained by Peter Easterby. Written by John Frankham. Second, number 14, Pollardstown, owned by Mr. R.S. Formby, trained by Stan Meller, written by Philip Blacker. And third, number six, Daring Run, owned by Mrs. Helen Doyle, trained by Peter McCreary, and written by Mr. Ted Walsh. With fourth, number 17, Star Fen, and the distance is one and a half lengths and a neck. So Peter Easterby trains his fifth champion hurdle winner. John Frankham rides his 80th winner of the season and Sea Pigeon now passes the record for first prize money jumping of Red Rum and Night Nurse as the 7-4 favorite for the champion. His winning stakes before this race 98,135, to which will be added 24,051. The greatest gelding to have raced, I think we can say without contradiction, in our time. Equally brilliant on the flat as he is over hurdles. First champion hurdle, of course, for the ex-champion John Frankham in the current title league. What a beautiful ride he gave this race. Pigeon, an 11 year old by Seabird out of Around the Roses. The ninth favorite to win the champion hurdle. Amazing training performance. And the winning rider, John Frankham. Mrs. Muldoon, Valerie Muldoon on his right. Paddy McGrath to the left of the picture. 
the chairman of... Yeah, I couldn't have put in a notebook any better. <laughs> Fantastic. John gave him a super ride. You would think he had been with him all his life, you know, he knew him really well. Yeah. John, mm -hmm. was John able to help you about, uh, about the ride? <laughs> yes, he, well, I asked him before the... I'd only ridden him once, and my only thought was that last year when John Joe won this race, they were quite close up together, and he was never far off the pace. And, you know, I was glad John Joe was here to ask, you know, give me advice, because I didn't know if I had him any closer, whether he'd run a bit free or not, but he ran, you know, John Joe gave me the advice I wanted, and that's how he ran. Actually, the first time you rode him at Sandown, he didn't quite find as much as he did today, did he? Or did he didn't. He wasn't as fit as he was today, though. He blew an awful lot afterwards. He had a lot of muck coming out of his nose. And uh, I knew he'd be a better horse today than he was then. Well, a great win for you. Then Starford and Knighthood up the bar. Don't it right, jumped it well from Newman. Gay chance for the Shikstrophy. On the way, it's Don't it right from Gay chance. Stephen Knighthood. Great late winner of a new challenge on the far side for the top weight. As he's on, it's a great from Gay chance. It's fine at the top four tonight. Play right to post. Don't it right, the winner from Gay chance. A photo for serve between Newman and Knighthood. Then came Gray late Starford, then Donegal Prince. And behind Donegal Prince came home or Star. Then the Tsar of Legends of Gordon and Hill of Slain. And behind Hill of Slain came Prince of Spain. And the back markers include Great Forwarder. Last of all was Chain of Reasoning. And also towards the rear was Mount Harwood. And so the result of this, the Mecca Bookmakers Handicap, is a victory for number one, Celtic Ride, who defies top weight in fine soil. Owned by Mrs. K.I. Haywood, trainer Compton, by Peter Cundall, and ridden so superbly. Right. On the inside then for Auctionick, Balco's putting in a run now over on the far side, David Goulding coming there very strongly on the far side, with also Holmore Star, they're coming down out of the final flight, it's Mount Harbord now, Donegal Prince, Holmore Star and Ekbalco, Ekbalco on the side, Mount Harbord lands in the lead, and it's Mount Harbord from Ekbalco, Ekbalco magnificently produced by David Goulding, has just tripped the, up hit the front, but Donegal Prince is fighting back, and it's Ekbalco on the far side, Donegal Prince on the near side, Ek Balco on the far side, Donegal Prince on the near side, it's going to be a photo finish, at the line it's a photo, and Balco for me has just won it. Side. Over on the far side is Celtic Isle, and Denning Rose is going to land in the lead. Denning Rose lands in the lead there from Celtic Isle, then Richley, and then Prominent King. And John Frankham now racing away to complete a notable double here. It's Denning Rose producing a sprint as he races up towards the line. You'd think this was top of the ground conditions. He's sprinting away to win the Waterford Crystal Stairs hurdle at the line. Denning Rose wins it very comfortably indeed. Rose from Artifice, Little Bay's in third, and John Frankham improving on the inside towards the left of the picture towards the near side, you they come to the final fence now. Little Bay coming to challenge, Weston Rose looks as though he's going to land in the lead. Little Bay lands in the lead from Weston Rose second, Artifice third. Three previous winners fighting it out now as Little Bay strides away as they race towards the line from Weston Rose and Artifice. It's Little Bay and John Frankham deputising for injured John Joe O'Neill coming up to the line to win the Captain Morgan's entry chase. Little Bay is the winner. Second is Weston Rose, third is Artifice. They're the one, two, three, then came Rath Gorman and C. Merchant, and finally, Ragafan, and then the Brockshi. And so the result, first, number three. Little Bay, owned by Mrs. Stuart Catherwood, trained by Gordon Richards, and written by John Frankham. Second was number nine, Western Rose, owned by Mr. K.W.P. Curtis, trained by Mrs. Mercy Rymel, and ribbon by Sam Morshead. And third was number four, Artifice, owned by Mr. Paul K. Barber and Mr. John Thorne, trained by John Thorne and written by Peter Scudamore. And it's a photograph, in fact, for fourth place. But uh, an amazing result, this, with three previous winners involved in the first three in this opener on National Day, worth, incidentally, 9,763 to the winner. Let's see it from the vital stages and rejoin them with Julian Wilson. Very strongly indeed cruising on Brown Chamberlain. And it's Drum Larkin and Brown Chamberlain now. Tommy Rahn and John Frankham. John Frankham the champion. Bidding for his first triumph for the meeting. Going very easily on the far side on Brown Chamberlain. Drum Larkin on the, on the near side. Wilton and Ono still in contention at the final fence now. Drum Larkin lands in the lead from Brown Chamberlain on the far side. Wilton and Ono comes next. There's Brown Chamberlain from John Larkin. 
as they race up the hill. Brown Chamberlain is sprinting, and he's going to go and weigh a win this very comfortably indeed. Brown Chamberlain sprints to the line to win it from Rilt Nanona with Drum Largan just holding on to third place in a photo, possibly. He may have just held. $50 more than Wayward Lad and Little Owl coming down to the second from home in this, the King George of Six Chase, and Silver Buck being challenged by $50 more and Wayward Lad. Silver Buck, $50 more. Wayward Lad, just one more fence to jump. And the Dickinson pair with Silver Buck and Wayward Lad being challenged by $50 more. Vader is the choice between the three. Wayward Lad on the near side, Silver Buck on the far side. $50 more in between these two as they jump the final fence. They're in the air together, they touch down together. $50 more, Wayward Lad and Silver Buck. And it's Wayward Lad on the near side, $50 more fighting back. Wayward Lad from $50 more and Silver Buck. Wayward Lad, $50 more. Silver Buck. Wayward Lad wins it from $50 more in second place. Then came Silver Buck in third, and these three well clear from Little Owl, who finished a rather tired fourth, and then came Knight Nurse back in fifth place, and Linda Sheedy completed the track to finish sixth and last. And so the result of this, the King George of Sixth Chase, is a win for number eight, Wayward Lad, owned by Mrs. S. N. Thewlis, trained at Harewood by Michael Dickinson, giving a superb ride by John Frankham. Second was number three, $50 more, ridden by Richard Dinley, and third was number seven, a silver buck ridden by Robert Owen. Railing towards the stand side, coming down to the second last now, Peter the Butcher, flat out, jumps it about five lengths clear of Al Q. Waite, chasing him over on the far side, Halen on the near side, and it's Al Q. Waite and John Frankham now coming to challenge Peter the Butcher as they come to the final flight. Peter the Butcher on the far side, Al Q. Waite on the near side, Al Q. Waite lands Bartley in the lead, it's Al Q. Waite now on the near side, going away, a brilliantly judged race this by John Frankham, Al Q. Waite from Peter the Butcher as they race up towards the line, Al Q. Waite from Peter the Butcher, and that's going to be the result, and at the line, Al Q. Waite wins the night's royal hurdle, Peter the Butcher is second, it's going to be close for third between Halin, Halin, and uh, here's why in a photo for third place, but Al Kuwait, the clever winner from Peter the Butcher, they're the one two, a photo for third, so the official one two, first number seven, Al Kuwait, owned by Sheikh Fahad, trained by Fred Winter and written by John Frankham. From Classified and News King, Artifice in the lead from Classified in second place, News King throwing down a renewed challenger, going down to the final fence, and Artifice has the advantage from News King and Classified, coming down to the final fence, Artifice a ball jump from News King and Classified, Artifice in the lead from New Skin Classified. Artifice from Classified and New Skin inside the final half. Furlo Artifice just holding on from Classified. He's straight down a tremendous challenge. And New Skin finishing fast of all. That's the line. New Skin's going to get there. New Skin, the winner for me in a photograph from Classified. Then came Artifice. Well, only three runners for this single Creek handicap chase. And you wouldn't wish for a more exciting outcome because for me, I think victory has gone to number one, News King. In fact, he's already announced over the public address system as the winner, owned by Mr. T.A. Foreman, uh, a train at Lambourne by Fred Windward, written by John Frankham, John 63rd of the season. Second is number five, classified. Racing down towards the second last now, and it's Barrow Hill Lad with John Frankham putting up three pound overweight. And on the far side, Royal Judgment. Barrow Hill Land lands in the lead from a Royal Judgment. Lucky Vane is back in third. They're racing down towards the final fence in the Coral Welsh National. And it's the gamble of the race. Barrow Hill Lad going well on the inside, over on the near side, over on the far side. Royal Judgment, then Lucky Vane. Racing into the closing stages, it's Barrow Hill Lad from Royal Judgment and Lucky Vane. Racing up towards the line, it's another for John Frankham as they race up towards the line. Barrow Hill Lad wins the Coral Welsh National. Second is Royal Judgment and third is Lucky Vane. They're the one, two, three. It's going to be very close for fourth with Midday Gun just holding Bonham Omen. Behind them came Corbier and so the result of the 1983 Coral Welsh National. First, number three, Barrow Hill Lad, owned by Mr. R.S. Riley, trained by Mrs. Jenny Pittman and written by John Frankham. Third from home, and Brigorn in the lead. Brigorn the leader from Sunset Cristo as they come to it. Brigorn the leader, jumps it well. Sunset Cristo is in second, Megan's Boy is in third. They've just got two more fences to jump, and it's now Brigorn and John Frankham beginning to draw away from the opposition. Brigorn, John Frankham in the lead, clear as they come down to the second from home. Brigorn in the lead. This is the second from home, Brigorn the leader. Jumps it safely, Megan's boy though is a challenger in second place. And Megan's boy is running very strongly indeed in second place. But a little bit one pace as they come down towards the 20th and final fence. It's
That's Grigor in the lead from Megan's boy. It all depends how they jump in as they come down to it. A furlong to go. Grigor and Megan's boy and Grigor and Megan's boy from Sugar Alley is through to third place. But as they race up towards the line, Grigor in the lead begins to draw away. Big hub to be ridden out though as they come up towards the post. Grigor in the lead, clear from Megan's boy. Coming up towards the line, Grigor's going to win it. That's the line. Grigor is the winner from Megan's boy. Gamble of the race, John Frankham and Brown Chamberlain over the second last clear and Everett is down. Gay chances over in second. Silent Valley is third. Then comes approaching and Midnight Love and Royal Judgment. But John Frankham strides for the last on Brown Chamberlain. It's Brown Chamberlain pricks his ears over the last fence clear from Gay Chance and listen to the chair because Fred Winter is going to win his first ever Hennessy Cognac Go Cup. It's Brown Chamberlain storming away on the run in. Brown Chamberlain from Gay Chance in third place, a very tart horse is Silent Valley. But it's John Frankham and Brown Chamberlain at the line, the winner of the Hennessy. Brown Chamberlain wins it. Gay Chance is second. If it were a handicap, Coombs Ditch would be getting a stone and a half. But it's Burrow Hill Lad. Burrow Hill Lad from Coombs Ditch. Wayward Lad back in third place, beaten in distress. They've got one more fence to jump. And it's Burrow Hill Lad on the right, Coombs Ditch on the left. And there's not that much to choose between the two of them as they come down towards the last. Burrow Hill Lad and Coombs Ditch. Burrow Hill Lad and Coombs Ditch. How do they meet? Are they meet it together. Burrow Hill Lad on the near side, Coombs Ditch on the far side. Both chockers going for absolutely everything. Burrow Hill Lad and Coombs Ditch. Nothing to choose between the two. Burrow Fan on his outside, and John Frankham still getting closer on the enigmatic Little Bay as they come down to the second last fence. Coyote lands in the lead from Ragafan. Little Bay jumps it third, and it's Coyote now. Ragafan under pressure, and Little Bay will be the challenger now to Coyote as they come down to the final fence. Coyote from Little Bay, Coyote under pressure. Little Bay coming there, cruising on his far side. It'll depend how they jump it. They both jump it well, but Little Bay takes the advantage on the level, and Little Bay brilliant written by John Frankham strides away as they race up towards the line to win this very cleverly indeed Little Bay the top weight is the winner second is Coyoto third is Western Rose and four Ragafan that's the one two three four so John Frankham needing only two now to beat Josh Gibbett's record of the fastest 50 he's now got till November the 10th to ride uh, two winners that's his 48th so the winner Number one, Little Bay, owned by Mrs. Stuart Catherwood, trained by Gordon Richards, written by John Frankham. John, congratulations, but it looked hard, hard work. Yeah, it was. Uh, we won a really good gallop after we jumped the first. We won a good gallop. Robert, I think his plan was to take me on all the way and try and make me make mistakes jumping, which he did for a couple of fences, and then I was making him make a few mistakes. And they finished very tired. He was a very brave horse. He'd be better off going round Cheltenham left hand. It was a bit sharp for him this way round. It looks like there's a sort of shootout between you and Wayward Lad. I mean, in fact, he knocked himself out of the end. He was trying yeah. to put you down. Yeah, you know, Jenny said, oh, we didn't go much of a gallop. Well, that wasn't one of the best chasers in England. Couldn't lay up with me. She complained because I came too soon in the NSC and didn't make enough use of him today. Oh, well, you've been giving. I think I'll let her ride him at Cheltenham in March. <laughs> <She> probably... <laughs> well, if Jenny Pittman uh, didn't like the way you rode him, apparently Colin Brown's been given a, a, a larruping by uh, David Elsa for coming too, coming too soon. So let's look at the closing stages, John, and see. There's a poem uh, about jockeys in the stand. He jumps it clear and jumps it well. Kenny Danny jumps it second and Gay Chance jumps it third. Racing into the closing stages and it's Borough Hill Lad putting up a tremendous performance here to become the fifth successive favourite to win the Hennessy Gold Cup as he strides up towards the line. Borough Hill Lad is the winner. Second is Kenny Danny. It's going to be close for third with Gay Chance just holding confidence, Borough Hill lad coming down to the third last and the gains were chase. Borough Hill lad, the better jump, silver butt under pressure and gets a backhander there and struggling. Borough Hill lad turning the tap on as he turns into the home straight. Two to jump, Borough Hill lad going clear from silver butt. Two out. Borough Hill lad, a superb jump from silver butt second. Royal judgment is back to deprive him of second place. There's only one horse in the race. There's one fence to jump. It's Borough Hill lad a long way clear at the last jumps down to the fence a little bit but Borough Hill Lad is a long long way clear from Silver Buck who makes a mistake and it's Borough Hill Lad getting a well-deserved round of applause a tremendous reception in fact Borough Hill Lad a long long way clear from Royal Judgment Borough Hill Lad the winner
between the three. They touch down together and racing towards the final fence now. It's observed John Frankham on the far side. Wayward Laird and Robert Earnshaw on the near side. These two observe from Wayward Laird. Cathy's Laird is third. Observe lands in the lead from Wayward Laird. And Cathy's Laird trying to get back in the picture now as they race into the closing stages. It's observed from Wayward Laird. Observe John Frankham, Wayward Laird, Robert Earnshaw. Observe from Wayward Laird and observe is going to win it and up the line. Observe with the Catholic Construction Gold Cup. Second is Wayward Laird and third was Cathy's Laird. Four came Henry Kissinger running up the hill fast to deprive a direct line of fifth places on a promise. Behind him came Little Bay and then Spartan Major. Behind him was Cordo and then Dramatist and finally Master Davenport pulled up with pay related and King or Country and so the result of the Kennedy Construction Gold Cup. First number seven observe owned by Mr. A.L. Gretton trained by Fred Winter and written by John Frankham. Second was number one Wayward Laird owned by Mrs. S.N. Thulis trained by Michael Dickinson written by Robert Earnshaw. Third was the long time leader number 17 Cathy's Laird owned by Mr. J.E. Clayton trained by Ellen Jarvis and written by Peter Scudamore and fourth was number three Henry Kissinger. Another breeze back in third, coming down to the third last fence in the rehearsal chase. Silver Buck and Observe. Silver Buck with a race on his hands at the third last. Silver Buck, Observe. Little between the two, coming down to the second last now. John Frankham on the far side on Observe. Robert Earnshaw on the near side on Silver Buck, Observe. Lands in the lead there from Silver Buck, coming down to the final fence now. And it's Observe with the advantage from Silver Buck. Observe from Silver Buck at the final fence in the rehearsal chase. Observe, lands in the lead from Silverback. Observe on the far side, Silverback on the near side, Silverback under pressure, making no impression. Observe going away from Silverback as they race up towards the line. Observe is going to win the rehearsal chase, and at the line, Observe is the winner. Silverback is second. Another breeze is third, and fourth a long way back will be Sontella Boy, and so the result of the rehearsal chase, first number four, Observe, owned by Mr. A.L. Gretton, trained by Fred Winter, and written by John Frankham, second, number seven, Silverbuck, owned by Mrs. Chris Feather, trained by Michael Dickinson, written by Robert Earnshaw, and third, number ten, Another Breeze, owned by Lady Carden, trained by Nick Gaisley, and written by... Half free and wayward lad making ground as they come down to the final ditch now. Earlsbrig, half free, Tom's little Al getting back into the picture, Wayward Lad over the far side, and old man Rolf Bond coming into the picture too, as they come down now towards the second last. Earlsbrig being pressed by half free, Wayward Lad on the far side, Rolf Bond right up with them, and they're racing now towards the last in a wide open race. Wayward Lad over on the far side, half free on the near side, Earlsbrig, then Rolf Bond. On the far side is Wayward Lad on the near side. It's half free. Wayward Lad landed in the lead then from half free and Earl's Brig. They're racing into the closing stages. It's Wayward Lad from half free. Wayward Lad from half free and Earl's Brig as they race up towards the line. Wayward Lad is going to win the Whitbread Gold Label Cup chase as they come to the line. Wayward Lad is the winner. Second is Earl's Brig. Third, half free. And fourth, Royal Bond. Then Coombs Ditch and the longtime leader. Tom's Little Al, and so the result of the Whitbread Gold Label Cup chase, first number seven, Wayward Lad, owned by Mrs. S. N. Thulis and Mr. Les Abbott, trained by Mrs. Monica Dickinson, and written by John Frankham. They're going to have a super day on, on the, at the Whitbread in a fortnight's time. I hope they really enjoy it. But one thing, Grace Jockey, you hardly ever rode in the Whitbread. Too good a race for you, was it, old chap? Came the wrong time of season for me. I was, I was a little bit portly <laughs> like you are this time of I year. I beg your pardon. Don't refer to my physique. Well, I hope you all have a good time as we've right, had here in the press here, room this lovely. morning. There will not be overall. We have here the greatest jockey the world has ever known. A man who transcends sport. You've got, for instance, Don Bradman and PBH made Tony Lock the great bowler, Stanley Matthews and Georgie Best, Muhammad Ali as a boxer, Clive Lloyd in the field. There are certain Montana when he's throwing for now for Kansas, fantastic sportsmen who are above the sport. The greatest jockey here. So, no, no, I'm not embarrassing you. No, I am going to be heard on this one. You were the greatest. To watch you on a racehorse at a fence was a joy that will never leave me. A sublime feeling. I didn't, you didn't have to bet in the race. Just watch John Franco, the greatest jockey who ever rode. You are such a plonker. I promise you, every time we meet, we go through this rigmarole. It's like three continual cassettes of how great you are, this, that, and the other. And then by the time I've driven him somewhere, it's, oh well, I'll see you. Hello, John Franco. What's Christmas going to be like for you two? Any problems with the weight? 
Well, I always have problems with my weight, but uh, I usually try to relieve a little bit of room for lunch on Christmas Day. But I mean, I'll be chopping into a lovely bit of turkey, Christmas pudding and cream. Will you be allowed to do that? Oh yeah, I'll be getting into all of that, definitely, on Christmas Day. Yeah. But how would you run on Boxing Day if you eat all that on Christmas Day? Oh, I'll go to bed with the wife in the afternoon, give her a good hug. <laughs> <laughs> John Joe O'Neill came up to me and he said, he said, if you get half a chance, he said, take the Mickey out of Alan Brown. I don't know how many of you remember Alan Brown. He used to ride for Mickey, used to be up the north, and he had one of those faces. He always looked like he was just about to burst into tears. So I said, why? What have I got to do to him? He said, oh, he said, they're all taking the piss out of him up north. He said, um, his mum plays the piano, and he's had to have his picture taken with her, and it's been in the local press, and they've all had a go at him. So anyway, I waited until Alan Brown was sitting on the table where all the valets are cleaning the tables and a few lads around him. So I said, here, Alan, I said, here, your mum plays the piano a bit, does she? So you can imagine the buzz in the weighing room before the um, first race. The whole weighing room's gone quiet. So he's looked at me and he said, my mum's got no hands. I thought, fuck it now. <laughs> so, I mean, I'll do, I'll do anything for a laugh, but there is a limit. So... I've got up to have a go at him, and the whole weighing room's burst out laughing, because nothing wrong with his mum's hands at all, and I've been well and well true, well and truly set up. So, if no, sadly, there's worse to come from this. So, you've got to smile and pretend you've enjoyed it, and really, I was, you know, a bit pissed off about it. So, anyway, the next day it was the last. It was the last day of the three-day meeting. It was Newton Abbott the next day. So, all the northern lads had gone back home. The Irish lads had gone back. So I said to Steve Smith Eccles, I said, right, we're going to have the first person that walks in this weighing room on this. So um, the first person to walk in was Bob Champion. So I said to Steve, right, okay, you go and tee him up. So he goes and tees him up. Bob comes and sits next door to me. He said, oh, yeah, your mum plays the piano a bit then, John, does she? So I said, that's not funny, Bob. I said, my mum's got no hands. And he's just looked at me, said, oh, aunt, she said, does she want to sell her piano? He said, my aunt is looking for a piano. It just went <laughs> straight... Went straight over his head. Um, so there's there's probably loads of better memories for Cheltenham. They've been the odd winners, but the one that sort of I remember the most—that's the one. Yeah. <laughs>